This is Van Se, a very attractive and leafy suburb of Berlin to the southwest of the German capital. And the building I've got in front of me is the home of, or was the home of Bertolt von Stauffenberg. He was the older brother of Klaus von Stauffenberg. And uh, in 1943 to 1944, Klaus used to spend a lot of time in Berlin here with his brother. Indeed, that's the last place he actually slept in. On the uh, early morning of the 20th of July, 1944, he flew to uh, Rastenburg, today Kenshin in Poland. He left the bomb. Uh, which was meant to blow up Hitler. Uh, he flew back to Berlin and he a attempted the, a military uh, coup d'etat, which unfortunately failed. Uh, and uh, Klaus was shot in the early hours of the 21st of July by General Fromm. And uh, Berthold uh, was uh, put on trial before the People's Court the following month and he was executed. Now, Berthold was a lawyer. He'd worked uh, in the League of Nations, and then he, he worked in. He was a military lawyer. He, in fact, he got when he got called up for military service, he did so as a lawyer. And um, anyway, I see the bin men have just come down. But uh, uh, anyway, I'll do a separate video on Berthold uh, to uh, to give you a bit of uh, idea of his background and uh, uh, what he did, because I think those involved in the resistance. Now, this was a place where people in the resistance would actually meet. Uh, they met in many places, but uh, this, this, this was one of those, particularly after Klaus sort of took it upon himself to sort of lead the, uh, the resistance. Uh, so, anyway, I'll show you a bit of the area here because this is quite um, a very attractive area down here now. Uh, Bertold, if he were going into the centre of Berlin, he would have got in quite quickly because the, the s bahns only about five minutes walk down here. You can see this is a very wealthy area. Uh, it has uh, these uh, magnificent uh, houses and villas here. And... Yeah, I'll just walk past the bin. And... You know, you don't need qualifications to become a bin man, you know. Just pick it up as you go along. Anyway, I forgot what I was saying. Yes. Um, the uh, house of the Vance Conference is actually uh, walking distance as well, although that's the other side of where the railway station is. And another point uh, is that this is very close to where the crossing point was. So if you were going traveling uh, to Berlin from West Germany through East Germany, you'd use the crossing point, the Dry Linden, which is also in walking distance. Now, when I hitchhiked from uh, well, through East Germany, I get the train to this barn to here to Vance, and then I would uh, hitchhike from Dry Linden. Uh, there's plenty of people there, and uh, you could always find somebody who'd stop for you. I now use blah blah car, but I am now collecting people rather than. Um, uh, <laughs> doing it uh, uh, myself hitchhiking, although I use it as a, as a passenger as well. Okay, so there's a bit of a look around what Vance looks like. Now, I'll do, I'm trying sl slowly to get through people who were in the uh, resistance in to National Socialism, and uh, so I'm, I'm doing this, taking me a long time. I started writing a um, an account of the life of Helmut Stief, uh, who was with um, uh, Stauffenberg on that day. In fact, he didn't fly back to uh, Berlin and he was arrested probably around 11 o'clock in the evening of the 20th of July, uh, as was Berthold for that matter.
the case of Bertold, it was pretty obvious, though. I mean, he, his brother, clearly, uh, by that time it was known it was his brother had, had done it, and because of the, the rules of Sippenhaft, in any case, uh, that was to say they'd get their family uh, of the person. Um, so that, that was, alone was enough to, uh, to make sure he was uh, arrested. And as the case of Helmut Stief, uh, well, he travelled with them. So, uh, good. So, uh, those things that have come, I've been writing this thing on Helmut Stief for three years, so it, uh, it still hasn't been done. Mind you, it's not as long as the one I've been writing on Mengele, which is now into its uh, fourth, oh, four and a half years. Uh, so, um, well, Mengele's escape, it's not just Mengele, it's not the whole, his life, it's just his escape uh, from 1945 until he left Europe. Good. So, thanks very much for watching. Hope you found that interesting. Uh, it didn't really have a great deal to do with the point. I know I came off it a couple of times, but uh, all the same. Um, if you're interested to know more, then you, uh, you might want to subscribe. I upload every Friday at 20 hundred hours my time, and I do videos from Poland and Germany mainly, but also, I mean, there's other stuff from other places as well. And I mainly do the Second World War, uh, Holocaust's my speciality. And now I'm going to the House of the Vance Conference. So, and I also want to go to a district of Berlin, uh, which I went to in 1987 to remind me of what it was like in the old days. This is called Steinbrücke. And um, there, there was, uh, it was an exclave of Berlin, completely surrounded by East Germany. But there was a, uh, an agreement whereby a road could be used. It was an exchange for territory uh, by and so the wall was on either side and there was this road going through and if you got on the double-decker bus then you could see into both sides of uh, East uh, East Germany uh, the dog runs and things you can see it's Dry Lindenstrasse Linden is a tree and I can't remember the word in English of it which is annoying it'll come back to me once I stop filming and in front of me down here, can't see it yet, but that's where the Vance um, Railway uh, S-Bahn station is. So, it's the end of June, fantastic time to be in, uh, in Germany or anywhere else for that matter. Um, or maybe not in Antarctica, but <laughs> in most places, it's a wonderful summer. So thanks for watching and all the best from me. Bye for now.